Just how different can 10 mandolin players sound soloing over the exact same tune? Well, today we're gonna find out because I recently reached out to some of my favorite YouTube mandolin players and asked them to send me a solo for the classic bluegrass fiddle tune, Bill Cheatham, which is actually a tune that I kind of struggle with because there's a lot of fast chord changes on that B section and I wanted to see how these great players approach that challenge. But I didn't give them any creative guidelines to start with because I wanted to see how these unique players approach the same tune differently. I also asked them to give a little rundown of their thought process behind their solo, the different creative decisions that they made, the techniques that they're using, so much information to glean here. And if you'd like to follow along at your own pace at home with your mandolin, I actually got transcriptions and tab and notation for all 10 of these solos available to all tiers over on my Patreon page at the link below. And we'll start things off here with Magnus Zetterland, all the way from Sweden. You know him from the Mandolin Secrets channel, from his podcast with Hayes Griffin and all the amazing mandolin educational content that he puts out. Let's take a listen to Magnus's solo here. very honored to be part of this series by David, so thank you so much. I got like five things that I want to point out that hopefully can inspire someone. The first thing that I was thinking of is, you might have heard someone say, nothing beats the melody. And for me, being a folk player, uh, that, that, that really applies to me. And it's basically this, my melody version of this that I'm using to improve my technique, my drive, my tone and everything. So it's really good to like find a, a melody version that you're really fond of. Next thing, it's actually playing around with the rhythm slightly. So starting it and next time. Very simple thing, but immediately adds variations to it. The third thing is actually to, to put in a little of, of a blues touch in there also. So... A little bit of blues in there. I think it's, for me, it's, it's a good thing. The fourth thing is a little bit of like skeleton melody, meaning making the melody simplified. So for example, in the B part where it's... So finding the, the essential notes there. That is like the skeleton thing. So one thing to try. And the fifth part is also one thing that I, I include in there. It's what I call like a hero lick. And that would be something that makes like it, it stand out sort of. So uh, what I'm including in my version is this. That's what I am calling a little hero lick. So five quick ideas for how to spice up and make variations to a fiddle tune. For my equipment, I play this um, F5 mandolin. It's a red diamond mandolin made in Ohio by Luther Don McRosty. It's pretty new for me. I got it this year in February. It's a lovely instrument and it's really a big upgrade for me. I'm using a Hense. Uh, well, it's got my signature on it. It's Magnus Sedlun signature pick. Really good one. I like it. Then for the strings, I'm using straight up strings. There's just something with the overtones of those strings that I really like. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure being here in this, uh, highlighted in this series. Thank you so much. I'm Magnus Sedlund. Awesome playing, Magnus. I love that idea of the melody shining through in your solo, but also having some flashy stuff up the neck there too. Hero lick, that's an awesome phrase. I'm gonna steal that one for sure. <laughs> Moving on to our second mandolin player here, this is Lauren Price Napier, and you probably know her amazing modern Monroe style playing from her band, The Price Sisters, but she's also made appearances here on the channel before and has a great YouTube channel of her own that you should definitely check out. 
Let's take a listen to Lauren Solo. It's Lauren. Um, just a quick talk about my setup here. Very minimal. <laughs> I'm actually just using my AirPods um, uh, to listen to the backing track to record on top of and then uh, my iPhone to make the video, but it works. Um, I'm playing a 1923 Gibson F5 mandolin. Um, my own personal mandolin is a Buckeye mandolin, but I've been playing this one on loan for a year or so and really enjoying it. Um, I guess I should move it into the picture a little bit better. And I use GHS silk and bronze strings, um, antique shell pick. Uh, I like this shape. It's a general kind of not too not too big, not too small size, rounded triangle. Uh, not super thick. This material, of course, is naturally heavy, so it's hard enough that it doesn't bend. But I I like a bit of a thinner pick actually, just not something that'll flex. Um, that's kind of how I how I get. Uh, go after the tone that I want anyway, uh, depending on what I'm playing. And thought process behind this solo, um, kind of in general for fiddle tunes, I tend to listen for, I mean, of course, your melody is, you know, what I pick out first. Uh, there's nothing wrong ever with playing the melody, no matter how simple you might think it sounds. Um, but within that, I tend to try to pick out... Um, what notes I find most key to establishing the melodic phrasing and the movement um, along your chord progression and identify what those are. And that same principle applies in my mind rhythmically as well. Um, and so something like this, instead of making it more left-hand notey, if you will, um, I was trying to imply a lot of that with the right-hand uh, shuffle patterns and picking up some extra open strings like You know, that's kind of a single note take on what I was doing, but a little bit more in depth here with the left hand, but. And also. Kind of a shuffle underlying all of that. So that's my thought process with a lot of standard fiddle tunes in general. Um, it's not necessarily a means of simplifying them, but I try to pick out again, like I said, what notes stand out the most to my ear as establishing this tune identifiable from an, any other tune um, and go from there and then build around build around that and fill in the blanks with textural ideas whether that's tremolo um, open string you know rhythmic things going on like i said but uh yeah it's kind of where i was going with it just two players in and we're already seeing how the same tune can sound so different between two players. I love how rhythmic that is. It just grooves so hard. All those double stops and slight melodic variations that Lauren's playing here, amazing work. Our third mandolin player guest here is Wayne Benson from Wayne's World of Mandolin here on YouTube. If you've seen his instructional videos, you know that his content really comes from a deep wealth of experience that he's had touring with Russell Moore in Third Time Out with his wife, Kristen Scott Benson. So many other people as well. Absolute mandolin legend. Stoked to have him here. Let's take a listen to Wayne's solo together. Those double stops at the end though, all those like syncopated jabs up the neck added so much excitement. Really fantastic solo, Wayne. Thanks for doing this. And if you're interested in recording stuff, here's a rundown of all the gear that Wayne used for this video. Okay guys, here is my rundown of what I used to make this work. It's a TAD 1R50 blue chip pick. Uh, these are the strings. On my mandolin, I really like the EJM 74s. Been using those 
since the time that uh, Diderio announced those, not really that long, maybe a year ago or so. This is my 1926 Gibson F5 mandolin that I was able to buy in September of 1998. This is serial number 82933 um, Fern overlay, as you can see there. So that's kind of what I was playing and what I had going on sound-wise there. Over here, I'm old school. I'm one of the guys that still uses a, this is a Roland 2480, which was like, in my opinion, the, the you know, the top of the line as far as workstations uh, that were standalone like this. And you could actually work on the computer monitor and you got to use a mouse. Many of the other systems were not as uh, agreeable as that to work with. I do, as great as that unit sounds, I do have the the preamps and the analog to digital converters are great, but I do have that bypass. I'm using an API A2D. It's it's still on. You can see it responding to what I have to say here, but that's um, a really great unit for a guy like myself that only needs a couple of channels of really good analog to digital converter and preamp. Um, that'll get it done for you. The microphone that I'm using is a Kell HM3C. I've had this for a while. We were fortunate enough uh, with Third Time Out to get an endorsement with Kale. And that that's a really clean, true reference microphone that I really love on mandolin. So there's my rundown of the gear that I used. Moving on to our fourth mandolin player here. This is Andy Hatfield from the Acoustic Groove Box channel here on YouTube. He's also an incredible flat picking guitar player. He's won a bunch of contests and does some content for the Lessons with Marcel channel as well. Here's his solo. <laughs> wanted to give you a quick rundown on the gear. This is probably the cheapest mandolin in this video. I bought it used for $100 off a of reverb. I paid more for the shallower tuners and for a nice bridge from Stuart McDonald and uh, put some frets on it and made it play in tune. It's got a couple cracks in it. That's why it was cheap. And um, it's kind of an overachiever and I like it. I, I play it a lot um, and I like this instrument. Um, I've got the little grommets blocked off here. I got the little leather here. Block off all these extra things. You can make an inexpensive instrument sound pretty good. Um, for a pick, I use a Dunlop Ultex 1mm. These get a bad rap as being scratchy, but they get smoother the longer you play with them. These are the Bobby Osborne strings from GHS, medium lights. It's a great set of strings. Um, and then the other stuff, a microphone, it's a Lewitt microphone and a basic uh, interface. It's a Behringer UMC 204 HD. So it's a like a $100 interface or something like that. So um, a little bit on my approach to this melody. Um, the first thing I did when I got uh, David's email asking to do this was I sang a break for it. I listened to the track he sent. And I sang what I thought I wanted to play. The reason I did that, it was 6 in the morning. Everybody else in the house was asleep. And I sang it into my phone. And this is a trick I learned years ago out of the Hot Licks for Bluegrass Guitar book, um, where you sing what you want to play into your recorder, and then you try to play it later. And so I liked what I had, and I went and tried to play it. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. I had to simplify some things some things just didn't work and then from a musical standpoint you know bill cheatham goes doo, doo, doo. it's an a chord and it's a low note and a high note so i went a low note and a high note and then a low note and a high note 
a low note, then a high note, and then, you know, just a bunch of other stuff. So essentially at that point, I'm playing the chords and not the song, and I try to bring it around to give you a little flavor of the song. If I was the first person on the track, I would just play the basic song. But since there's probably several people on this, I figure they're going to put me far enough down the line where I don't have to hold the melody. Okay? So thank you very much for having me do this. And, uh, and that's that. Thanks a lot. Man, that is such a great idea, singing an entire solo into your phone first, and then going back and learning that solo on your mandolin later on. I'm sure that's why there's so many unique melodic ideas here. And Andy's really right, as the jam goes on, as more solos happen, later on you have more opportunities to do different things with your solo. You don't have to stick to the melody, you can do different stuff like this as well. I love it, thanks so much, Andy. For number five here, we have another talented flat picker as well as a mandolin player the incredible Hayes Griffin from his own channel. You might have also seen him make appearances on the Mandolin Secrets channel and on Lessons with Marcel. He's just a really articulate teacher and player, has a lot of jazz influence, and I'm excited to hear his solo with you. Hey David, thanks so much for having me in this video. For those of you that don't know me out there, my name is Hayes Griffin and I'm a mandolin and guitar player based in Columbus, Ohio. Today I'll be playing my trusty Red Diamond Vintage 22F model built by Don McRosty in Athens, Ohio with a blue chip TAD50 pick. That's my preferred pick for mandolin and guitar. And I've got straight up strings mediums on this mandolin right now. I've recorded today's session with a warm audio WA-84 small diaphragm condenser. A lot of times I like to use those in stereo on my mandolin, but today I'm pairing that with my Stellar X3 large diaphragm condenser microphone. The solo that I played here on Bill Cheatham today was inspired by two main melodic devices, encircling and chromatic connecting lines. These are both devices that I stole from some of my favorite swing mandolin players like Tiny Moore and Jethro Burns, and I think they're a great way to add some angular, spicy sounds to your bluegrass mandolin playing. Encircling is simply where you take a target note, like the C-sharp in the melody to Bill Cheatham, and play a scale tone above, a half step below, and then land on your target note. You can also target your note the opposite way, half step below, scale tone above, target note. I've found that that's a great way to kind of add, like I said, an angular sound to your playing and maybe spice things up from your standard linear bluegrass lines. The second tool that I was using was chromatic connecting lines. This is one that I mainly picked up from Tiny Moore. This is all over the place in his playing. And you can see that he connects a lot of chord tones with one another using chromatic notes, not notes from the scale. One of the main ones that pops to my mind is the last few bars of my B part here on Bill Cheatham. I play a line that sounds something like this. I think adding lines like that to your playing is a really great way to build some tension and anticipation for when you land on those phrase endings and target notes like I did in the B part. So chromatic connecting lines can definitely be a good tool for you. One last thing I want to mention about my break is that it's pretty much entirely bound together by what I call the skeleton melody to the tune Bill Cheatham. The skeleton melody is a concept that I like to think of as a reduction of a fiddle tune melody down to its most essential notes so that you can capture the spirit of a tune and hit some easier targets allowing you to clear space and make variations of that tune on the fly. The original melody to Bill Cheatham sounds something like this. But what I keep in my, the back of my mind is something that sounds more like this. Like I said, this clears some space, gives you easier targets to hit, and allows you to check back in with that melody so it sounds like you're actually grounded in the tune while you're improvising. 
All right, folks, there you have it for my break here on Bill Cheatham. I hope that those concepts in circling, chromatic connecting lines, and the skeleton melody can help you out when you're making your own breaks to fiddle tunes like this one. That is such a helpful rundown, Hayes. Thank you for that. I thought I heard a little tiny more in Jethro Burns in there. And that encircling trick is such a cool idea. I'm definitely going to steal that for making my solo sound a little bit more jazzy. <laughs> Well, we're halfway there, just five more mandolin players to go. And for number six, here is a familiar face. David here and I decided to do something a little wacky with my solo since I knew we were going to be hearing a lot of Bill Cheatham. So it may not be the most tasteful solo, but if I get a few smiles out of it, then I feel like my job was accomplished here. I planned this solo out pretty much note for note before I played it and at first listen, it may not sound like there's a lot of melody in there, but I'm really referencing target notes of the melody throughout the solo, just getting there in different ways. And then I'm just doing some weird things to displace those target notes by either getting there a beat too early or too late, by starting phrases on upstream instead of downstrokes for some syncopation, even adding in some quarter note triplets, which sounds kind of weird on a fiddle tune, I know, but we did it anyways. I also wanted to sneak in some chromaticism and some implied advanced harmony over the A section, even snuck in a diminished chord. Let me know in the comments below if you think I did it successfully though. <laughs> and then for a flashy finish, I wanted to go all the way up the neck to play the B section melody in a higher octave which the frets are pretty tiny up there, but makes for a fun ending. And for this video, I'm using my trusty Apidius Vanguard mandolin. I have the new D'Addario XS custom medium strings on here, which I've been liking a lot recently. And then for the pick, I have a blue chip CT55, but with the holes drilled through, which I've been liking a lot recently too. The audio is being recorded through a pair of Neumann KM184 mics to my Focusrite Scarlet interface, plugged directly into my computer recorded on Logic. I hope you enjoyed this solo. Enough of that nonsense. Let's get back on track with our seventh guest here, Kylie K. Anderson, who's currently living in the Netherlands and playing with the duo Long Way Home. I love Kylie's channel. You should definitely check it out. And I think you're really gonna like her solo. Let's take a listen. I've been playing a Northfield 4th gen. Um, it's actually pretty new to me, so I'm still figuring out exactly what strings are best for it. Um, but at the moment I have EJ74s on it, and I'm using Blue Chip CT55. Um, yeah, so when I think about a fiddle tune or something like Bill Cheatham, there's a lot going through my head, <laughs> but there's kind of two things that I think the most about. Um, so the first one is how can I make it into sort of a singable or s simplified melody? So especially in a tune like Bill Cheatham, I think it's really powerful to kind of simplify it and, and that can add some nice variety to the, to the break. Um, so in the B part of Bill, Bill Cheatham, instead of that kind of full melody-ish, um, I could do something like this. And I think that is a nice way to kind of break things up. Um, and then also, I really love to play licks. <laughs> so I love to learn kind of these funky, crazy licks, and then I can kind of slap them in to any break that I'm playing. Um, and so for a tune like Bill Cheatham, you know, I get to the end of the phrase and, and I have some kind of ending lick like that that I can just whip out. 
Um, and then when I'm, you know, in a different setting and I want to try something different, try a brand new break, just slap a, a new lick at the end and there's at least some variety and some freshness to what you're playing. Great playing, Kylie, and awesome tips about using licks to finish phrases. I do that all the time, and I think having a big database of licks is really important. That's why we're here, right? You're definitely gonna recognize our eighth mandolin solo coming to you from Mando Lessons man himself, Baron Collins Hill. And Baron was really one of the first mandolin content creators on the platform. We owe so much to him, and it's a big honor to have him here on this video. <laughs> Hey everybody, Baron here. On that solo over Bill Cheatham, I was playing my trusty LSA5, strung with Daddario EJ75 strings, using a Dunlop prime tone, 1.5 big brown triangle. It's always interesting to take a solo when you don't have any context of what came before or after like you would in a normal jam. So I thought I would just give a little bit of context of what I thought about doing and sort of what ended up happening. First off, what I'll say is I love to just sort of fly by the seat of my pants when I take solos. I don't generally put a whole lot of thought into them uh, in terms of, you know, building up specific things that I'm going to do. I just listen to what came before and say, hmm, what, what is that inspiring me to play? In this case, uh, wanting to do something a little bit different, I started out with some kind of dissonance and interesting kind of rhythmic ideas of... Uh, kind of a big A dominant 7 chord. And let's see, from there I kind of stayed down low, played a little bit with kind of altered chord ideas. You know, the, the tune's mostly playing over A, D, and E. Um, but I know at some point I went kind of uh, implying a G major chord, which is kind of a bluesy sound uh, over that context. Let's see, and after that I kind of ramped up into the middle of the instrument and kind of played around with kind of blues scale using a lot of, so again, we're in A major, so I'm also throwing in some C naturals and G naturals to kind of add a little bit of a kind of bluesy flavor, and also just kind of playing around with improvising fairly eighth note heavy, kind of over a lot of bar lines so that my solo doesn't necessarily line up with where you would expect kind of the chords to fall and the phrasing to fall. I tried to maybe disorient people a little bit, um, mostly for fun though, to, uh, to you know just sort of keep you guessing, oh, what's gonna happen? How is he gonna land this? And at the end, I, I think I land it fairly well, but it's always a bit of a challenge when you kind of get out there and then have to reel it back in at the last second. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks to David for having me. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Man, killer playing, Baron. I love that you really took the solo to a different place with all those double stops and syncopated variations. And then we got to the melody there at the end for a really nice resolution. Our ninth Bill Cheatham solo is coming to us from across the pond over in England from Mike Giverin of the Mando Mike channel. And Mike is a very talented mandolin player who plays with the band The Jaywalkers. And his channel is just absolutely full of incredible mandolin lessons that you should definitely check out. For now, let's take a listen to Mike's solo and see how it sounds. Mando Mike and just a little rundown on what equipment I'm using for my Bill Cheatham solo. So this is my Crist Effect mandolin made in 2002. He made it for himself I think. I got it third hand. So he's done some unusual features. It's a solid mahogany back which is quite unusual for mandolins. Normally it's two pieces and he always um, 
shaves down his neck, which is a lot easier for controlling slides. And he's based in the Czech Republic. Uh, I think in America you might know him as Krishot, but in the UK we know him as Christofek. Uh, the microphone I'm using is an AKG C214. Uh, just sort of a bit of a jack of all trades, picks up vocal, it means I can just have one microphone for these videos. Uh, I love Vegan Picks for the added grip that they give me, and I'm using the Daddario XS Strings uh, 11s. Um, they're the closest things to Elixirs I can find. I used to love Elixirs, but um, unfortunately they're no longer available. Um, my solo is very scale based, um, so uh, a lot of A major scales with some A pentatonic blues scales in there and sort of some chromatic scales thrown in in the first time through. I guess the summary of my solo is I, when I'm playing fiddle tune solos, so we're specifically over fiddle tunes, I sort of see it as like an elastic band that you can push and stretch and pull and then bring it back together. But at all points, it still sounds like the melody. So how much can you mess around with timings and rhythm and notes, but still the core of Bill Cheatham is in there and then you snap back for the next section, play the melody, and then you're off again. You stretch it in another direction. So that's how I think of those solos. Um, I have a bit of a, you know, some cross picking in there, some down the neck, some some chromatic double stops um so hope you liked it and i'm looking forward to seeing all the other videos an elastic band that is such a good analogy for improvising over a fiddle tune just snapping back to the melody but seeing how far you can stretch it and still maintain its form awesome playing mike thanks for doing this Last but not least, our 10th and final Bill Cheatham solo comes from Jake Howard of the band The Hen House Prowlers up in Chicago. His YouTube channel features some of the most beautiful videography I think the mandolin world has ever seen before. And he owns about every nice mandolin that I'd ever want to own and makes them sound really good. Let's take a listen to Jake's solo. Mind blown. Whoa, there's some crazy stuff going on there. Here's a word from Jake about this video. Hey everyone, it's Jake Howard here. I wanna thank David for having me on his channel and having me do this uh, solo. I cannot wait to get roasted by you for my choices. Okay, okay. In all seriousness, I do wanna thank David for having me in this video and also for all the mandolin content he puts out. It's quite literally amazing. So David, thank you. All right, so looking up this message that David sent, uh, a rundown of mandolin picks, strings, etc. So the mandolin I'm using in this video is my gorgeous 2017 Nugget F. Oh, well, that was fun. So Nugget uh, from 2017, it's number 310. I got it from Mike, uh, custom ordered. Uh, really fortunate to have it. It sounds great. And it plays great too. And for picks, I'm using a Wigan, uh TF-140. I switched back between that and the blue chip CT-55. Uh, usually I use the CT-55 for almost everything, but I thought, why not, why not change it up? Okay, so audio cut out during the string part. Not a problem. I use D'Addario strings. I use their excess strings. I've been using D'Addario my whole mandolin career, and the Henhouse Prowlers, the group I play with, we were really fortunate to start working with uh, D'Addario uh, last year. So D'Addario all the way. So for mics, I'm using an AKG C414, uh, running that into one of the Focusrite Scarlet preamps. I don't remember the name of it, to be honest. So I was so excited when David asked me to be in this video. Uh, it gave me a chance to actually write out a solo, which I don't get to do that often, which is kind of sad. A lot of the stuff I do is improv, which I love. But writing solos is something where you can do a lot of exploration. So you can try things that maybe, maybe they aren't the most tasteful licks, or maybe they might come off as showboaty, or they might be like, there's too many notes. I think that's okay. I think, I think trying to explore it and figure out things that are going on in your head and being able to put those on paper is a lot more useful than worrying about what people are thinking about your soloing. So a little homework for you guys is maybe write a solo over this song and see what comes out. See what you hear in your head or what you'd like to hear. 
uh, I, I would love to hear some videos of people writing their own solos. All right, everyone, that's my time. David, thank you so much for everything you do, and I'll see y'all next time. Ah, that is something very near and dear to my heart, Jake. Solo writing is such an important way to become a better mandolin player, a better improviser, and just to explore more of the fretboard, like you were saying. So go and try to write your own solo for this tune, but also take advantage of all the resources here. If you want those tab and notation transcriptions for all 10 of these solos, again, you can find them over on my Patreon page at the link below. And just a huge thanks to all these incredible mandolin players for participating, for sharing their music and their knowledge with us. There's also links below to all of their YouTube channels, so please go subscribe, watch their videos, support mandolin content here on the platform because we're stronger together. And hopefully we'll do more collaborations like this in the future. So let me know in the comments below if you have any other ideas for collab videos and hopefully we'll see you in a video like that real soon.